ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen and ladies. Ladies and gents. Got a little bit of hearts and fire and love and Desiree. All right. What? Desiree is desire. Come on now. Y'all better pay attention. Wow. I'm going to have to turn the volume down, even though you can barely hear it because of the noise cancellation of the headset. It's one of those evenings. Now, this ain't going to be put up until the morning. I want to make sure y'all understand that. Let me say it again. This ain't going to be put up until the morning. I'm about to turn Earth, Wind, and Fire off for a second because it's necessary. Now, ladies and gentlemen, they'll be back. I'm going to do some talking. Because I've already done all the videos, we're just going to explain everything because many people are still having a difficult time to understand exactly what's going on. So let me go ahead and explain it to you. When they came up with the Constitution and they backed it with gold and silver, that was unsustainable. What all of you don't realize is there is only so much gold and so much silver in the world. There's a finite amount. So it doesn't go on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. It's a finite amount. So because it's a finite amount of gold and silver in the world, they knew eventually that was going to run out. So they tried coming up with all kind of other things, sticks, rocks, you know, measurements, all that. None of that junk worked. Other precious metals didn't work. Okay, fine. Let's create these papers, and then we'll make it so that nobody can duplicate them. It's called fiat currency. Now, everybody hated fiat currency. Why? Because they hated the concept and idea behind it. That people can just print it up. Ladies and gentlemen, if you look at all the 1s, 5s, 10s, and 20s in existence of American money, at least 60% of it is counterfeit. Nobody checks a $1 bill. Nobody checks a $5 bill. You got idiots who are taking $1 bills and making them $10 bills. Now, those are the stupid people because they really don't know what they're doing. Sorry, I could tell you how to counterfeit bills because I was going to do it. I can tell you the equipment that you will need. I can even tell you where you can get the paper without having to expose yourself. I can even tell you where you can go to do it and it won't caught them back on you. But that's not what I do. I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm not going to tell you how to violate the law. That's why I tell you, on my site, you don't hear me saying anything about getting around no stupid law. Getting around no stupid statute. Even though statutes are not laws, I'm not here to tell you how to get around things. I'm here to state the facts to you. So the fiat currency was here to stay. So much was it here to stay that during the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln, you know y'all's hero? He printed money known as greenbacks because they had a green backing to it, i.e., where the terminology greenbacks come from. And he printed these greenbacks, and they got through the Civil War because he printed this junk pieces of paper, not backed by anything. They'll say, yeah, I was backed by it. No, it wasn't. And so they came up with the 1864 Banking Act. 1864 Banking Act allowed the banking associations to print their own script. Say what? Yeah, it allowed them to print their own script. They got to print their own currency. They called it circulating currency, circulating between the banks. Because banks, one bank would accept the circulating currency of another bank. That's why you hear them refer to as circulating notes. Then after 1864, the very same act, 1864 is the very same thing they did in 1933. That was written by the central bankers. The act of 1864 was written by the central bankers. The same as the March 9, 1933 act was written by the central bankers. 
that act led to the Federal Reserve Act of 1913. Everybody want to say it's, that act was illegal, it's not this, it's not that, doesn't matter. March 9, 1933 act was illegal. But here's the problem. You all accepted it. I ain't accepting nothing. I don't know what you're talking about, mother. Look, ladies and gentlemen, forget that moron. Who the, you call it a moron? I'm calling your mama a moron. Or get the out of my video. Sorry, apologize, ladies and gentlemen. People just want to just sit up there and push the mute button and unmute themselves all day long. And I, I can't afford that. All right. No, that person's been taken off. So you ain't got to worry about them coming back. Get back to the conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, there is this thing called conduct. Oh, I love the way he conducted himself during that interrogation. Yeah, conduct. You can agree by your conduct or by your failure to object. You can accept a contract. So what acceptance of the contract occurred when you use the Federal Reserve notes? Remember, you're not authorized to use Federal Reserve notes. Federal Reserve notes are for Federal Reserve banks and or their member banks for advances between the banks and for no other purpose are they authorized. So why are y'all using it? Why are y'all using it? Go to Cornell Law, look up 12 USC 411, and then go down to the very last amendment and take a look at redemption and all of that. You'll be enlightened. Getting back to this. There was a problem in 1933. It had nothing to do with no stock market crash. The banks had all of the governmental were barrel. Every last one of them. Remember, you guys heard of the, ro the roaring 20s? Everything was going so perfect. It was like a boom, big, huge bubble that they bursted, just like the 90s. Big, huge bubble, bursted. The dot-com bubble, heard of that bubble? That bubble gone? Bubble gum? Well, they did the same thing at the end of the 80s, then they did it at the end of 2008. Why? What you guys don't know is right about 2000 and I believe it was either 2008, 2012, don't remember the year, the banks no longer have to back their currency with anything. So they don't, they don't lose anything. Then as you learn in the videos, when you talk about credit creation, go, go ahead and look at it, credit creation, you'll see that the central banks will never go bankrupt. Why will the central banks never go bankrupt? Because they can just print more money. That's the way the law is written. That's what the government did for the central banks in order for them not to foreclose on the contracts. Remember, they had to finance the war. Who do you think backed the so-called greenbacks? It was the central banks. Come on now. Who do you think backed the so-called confederates? The banks. How could they pay for it without the banks? Okay. So now that you know, they were indebted, and the interest rate was high. They couldn't get the money from any place else. No other nation was going to loan the money to them, not without charging higher interest. And so they made a deal with the devil. Say it ain't so. I'm saying it is so. That's what I'm saying. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. I'm looking at through the camera, and I see Max out here. And I want to see what Max is doing. Max, what you doing? Just want to make sure he wasn't involved in something. He's lonely because he's out there by himself. But what's getting ready to happen is I'm getting ready to put Penny out there. I'm going to keep the dogs inside. They've been feeding all day. I ain't worrying about them feeding at night. Ain't nobody going to die because they didn't get breastfed during the night. So that's what I'm doing because I got no choice. I want to keep the dogs. They are my babies. And so I want to make sure they survive. Sorry, I had to open the door. I let a termite in. Yeah, this is termite season. And so he was on my screen door, and I decided to let him out because eventually I would have killed him. So he had to go. Let's get back to your currency, ladies and gentlemen. I just showed you guys a video of a professor telling you about money and how banks create money. What do they create money from? You're giving them promissory notes. Have you ever wondered why they don't return your stuff? 
All you do is go listen to the video. He tells you everything. And look, if you pay attention, because the guy who did the video that I'm showing you where the woman hears the guy talk about, it's all fake money. <laughs> when he says that, she goes, really? So it's like that, huh? <laughs> no, sorry. If you can only see the expression in her face, there is so much. That was like Oprah when she was doing Dame Chappelle, and he said what he said. And man caught her completely off guard. Didn't expect it because there are certain things that they're taught not to talk about. These are economists, just like your FBI so-called agents. They know, ladies and gentlemen. There is no money. I keep saying it to you, but nobody listens to me. Well, I just showed you two. Well, there are actually, I showed you one professor, but there are actually several of the professors who are talking about the same thing. A professor. This is their profession. This is all they talk about. They teach classes on this stuff. The money is not real. I did a TED talk. I listened to a TED talk where a guy talked about how he, his children play board games and they play Monopoly and how he gave them real money to play Monopoly. Uh, they, they had to get the money back at the end, but he went in and withdrew $10,000 trying to show everybody he got a little bit of cash in the bank. He withdrew $10,000 from the bank and set up the board and everything. The only thing he couldn't get was the $500 bills because those are hard to find. And he did his $10,000, and he divided up the bills, gave everybody their allotment, and they played the game. He said previously the kids would just be buying anything, but now the real money was involved at least what they thought was real money, they were a lot more conservative. Yeah, it's still monopoly money. Ladies and gentlemen, look, the banks take your promissory notes. And from your promissory notes, they create monies. But if you go and look at, I want you to pay attention because many of y'all are not paying attention. If you go and look at the amendment to the Trading with the Enemy Act, Section 401, which is the amendment to the, come on now, everybody, Federal Reserve Act, Subsection 18, Paragraph 6, says that those are obligations of the Federal Reserve, and when they receive it, they are allowed to create circulating notes. They're allowed to create money, lawful money. And that's what they do every time you give them a promissory note. Well, if you listen to the professor, he says we're creating debt. And we are creating debt. They're not lending us anything. But we are creating debt. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to discharge that debt. Now, you guys are going to learn something right now because I ain't taught it before. I mean, I've been saying it, but I ain't taught it. So I'm about to teach y'all something. Ladies and gentlemen. We're handing the banks promissory notes. We're not using the cash method. We're handing them promissory notes. Promissory notes that once we give it to them, it's a security. They're supposed to issue us lawful money through the treasury. Now, go back and look. Not supposed to issue us lawful money. It's supposed to be discharged. It's a payment. It's supposed to be discharged upon payment, dollar for dollar, face value. Go back and look at. Section 401 of the March 9, 1933 Act, otherwise known as Section 18, subsection or paragraph 6 of the Federal Reserve Act. And go and see what it says. When you give them that promissory note, it operates as discharge because the Treasury is the one who redeems the promissory note. Well, because the Federal Reserve, under that same paragraph, operates as the Treasury, the moment you hand it to the Federal Reserve, it's redeemed, and they get to create money because of it. The professor told you the exact same thing. Well, the statute tells you the exact same thing. So it's not a theory. You see how they call it a theory? Well, look at paragraph number four. Well, technically, not paragraph number four, section number four of the Federal Reserve Act of the March 9, 1933 Act, the one that I keep focusing on. Look at paragraph 18, subsection or subparagraph six. 
can see if it's not to be redeemed, if it doesn't become an obligation of the Federal Reserve, and if it doesn't amount to discharge. That's what the June 5th and 6th Act was, ladies and gentlemen. You gave up the gold, and now there was to be discharged dollar for dollar. You gave up the gold. Now there was to be discharged dollar for dollar. Pay attention again. You gave up the gold, and there was to be discharged dollar for dollar. If you're not discharging my debt dollar for dollar, give me back my gold. I'll take care of my own debts from now on, if you don't mind. Nobody's going into court saying this. Because you, you're getting these courts, these judges telling you, oh, you can't do that. No, we know we've already decided. I don't care what you decided. I asked for a jury trial. I want a jury to decide this matter. This is a legal matter. And the moment you say, I can't do something that I just showed you the statute that says I can, that means that we have a controversy. And I have a right to have that decided by a jury of my choice. My peers. My peoples. So take this finger and put it inside your ear and take this finger and put it inside your nose and take this finger and put it up. I'm sorry. Your Honor, I just need you to schedule my jury trial. We'd be all right. Because I'm going to be doing me some subpoenas. I'm going to be subpoenaing y'all. I'm going to subpoena your grandmama. You keep with me. All you got to do is go back and listen to what I just said. I just told you more than enough to be able to handle a lot of stupid stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, if you look at the Act, the March 9, 1933 Act, Section 4 of that Act, if you look at the Amendment to the Federal Reserve Act, Section 401, subparagraph 18, well, technically, paragraph 18, subparagraph 6, you'll see it says exactly what I've been saying. However, this is what you all are not paying attention to. If the Federal Reserve is to be able to use Federal Reserve notes, and it's supposed to be used as an advance between the banks, and for no other purpose are they authorized, then what is your remedy? Okay? What is your remedy? Huh? Your remedy is the use of notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptance. Why? What do you get to do with notes, drafts, visibly? That's your money, people. You, you don't use Federal Reserve notes. You use notes, drafts, bills of exchange, banker's acceptance. That's your money. That's the redemption when you give it to the Federal Reserve and they get to convert it to monies that they get the loan to other people, not to you. It's not a loan to you. Go back and read the act where it says they are to redeem it at par value. That's dollar for dollar, people. That is dollar for dollar. But y'all not hearing me, though. You see, all of you guys are doing it wrong. Fill out Form 3115, send it to the IRS. Fill out Form 3115, IRS Form 3115, send it to the IRS. Start using the accrual method. What is the accrual method? Well, they have their books where they say you owe money. You create your book where you say you don't owe money and then do a duplicate record of their books and let it be your books and offset it and zero out the account. And show them your accrual accounting. Ladies and gentlemen, there are books, I mean not books, but there are videos showing you how to do the accrual method. All of you should be using the accrual method. Why? Because if you do your research, don't listen to me. Do the research and find out that Legal tender in the form of Federal Reserve notes are considered cash. Legal tender, pay attention, in the form of Federal Reserve notes are considered cash. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you're not allowed to use Federal Reserve notes. Go look at 12 U.S.C. 411. It's to be used between the Federal Reserve Bank and the Federal Reserve Bank agents, meaning the membered banks the banking associations, not you. You are not authorized to use it. Well, if Federal Reserve notes are cash and you're not authorized to use it, that means you're not authorized to use cash. So you should be using the accrual method all the time. Mother, sorry, pay people, I apologize. I've been telling you guys about the accrual method and I've been telling you 
that they're mixing it up. They're confusing you. They're sending your bills under the cash method because they're presuming and assuming that you use the cash method. You need to notify them. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're sending me a cash method uh, sort of accounting. Well, I have it on good authority that you, as a company, don't use the cash method. So what you what are you doing sending me this accounting in the cash method? Oh, no, no. I need to see the accrual accounting of this particular transaction. Oops. Why? Because it is shown that it's zeroed out. There are two sides of the ledger. It is so that both sides of the ledger cancel each other out. There is no debt. Shh, don't tell nobody. Again, people, there is information out there. All you got to do is pay attention. Sorry. I got to get up again because it's quiet around here. And it ain't supposed to be as quiet. And I'm not So that's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That is crawling in the back of her at the tail. We have another one crawling at the feeder. And we have everybody else sitting there feeding like they're going to suck her dry. But we're doing okay. And I can see them getting stronger every day. I, I see the bully. There is one, he is the bully. He is the best looking one out of all of them, believe it or not. So I guess he's the Absalom. But anyway, he's the bully. I, I don't even know if it's a he or she, but I just know that that one's the bully. She was the bully, uh, Penny. And the dog I'm talking about, he is the same color as she is. So he's her twin. Sorry, I was just checking my door because there were two flies on it and I thought they were on the inside and I was coming out here to kill me some flies. Let's get back to our monetary lesson, okay? Look, ladies and gentlemen, many of you guys think you know money. Many of you think you know financing. So I'll say it again. I'm the guy that stood in the middle of the quad on several occasions with a $100 bill and tore it up in two and threw it up in the air. Why? Well, first, because it had no value. I, I would tell that to people all the time. I'm a teenager. Okay, my first job at the age of 16, I was making almost twice the amount my mother was making. And she was working 40 hours a week. And my check was coming in the same as hers. But my mother made a mistake, sorry. My mother was a person of her word, same as my father. My mother said, you got a job, you're going to be paying for your own stuff. You're going to be paying for your own food, and I did. You're going to be paying for your own clothes, and I did. I've been taking care of myself since I was 16 because that was what she told me. She told me I wouldn't have to pay lights and gas or anything like that, but I would have to pay my own way as far as clothing and stuff. Oh, boy, that was me. Sorry. Now they're whining, and this is to get my attention, so I'm going to let them have my attention because I'm coming in here to find out what they're whining for. What, what they're whining for. You don't need to quit leaning on them like that. They cannot help you know better than that, so I'm going to put you outside. Sorry. She's only going to be in here a few more minutes, and I'm going to put her outside. Um, they weren't whining because she was on her. It's just that she sat up to look at me and was leaning on one of them. Well, anyway, so by taking care of myself, a lot of lessons were learned. But I knew even then that the money was worthless. Look, ladies and gentlemen, it's a piece of paper. How could it have any value? It's a piece of paper the same as when you go to Costco's and you buy 500 sheets of a piece of paper. It's valueless. It has no value. Money, as they call it, only has value to the receiver. The two parties have to agree to its value. Without that agreement, there is no value. So, you all, if you switch to the accrual method, you'll be able to write off so much debt. Go back and listen to the professor when his video, just go and listen to that video. And you'll see that that professor talks about you having to discharge the debt that you created. 
Haven't I not been telling you all the same thing that every time you go out there and you purchase something, you're creating debt? That's why you're supposed to be using the accrual method because you have to offset that debt. And y'all don't listen to me. Y'all think I'm on crack. And that's okay, I am on crack. I'm in a house right now and it's 89 degrees. And it's 8 o'clock in the evening. It got to 102 and it felt like 108. This was probably the warmest day of the summer thus far. But it will be 107 by the end of the week. And that's going to be the average, 105 for the next two weeks. So those of you on the East Coast, you got a heat wave coming your way. Hope y'all can handle it because it don't look like it's going to be comfortable. Getting back to money, ladies and gentlemen. You're wondering how to pay your bills. Well, you got to go and rely on paragraph section 401 of the Federal Reserve Act. Just type it in Google, Section 401 of the Federal Reserve Act, or go to Amara, A-M-A-R-A, Legion, L-E-G-I-O-N, dot com, AmeraLegion.com, go to the PDF section, and type in 401. And there's the act right there for you. It even has footnotes pointing you in the right direction. And read it, and follow it. That's all you have to do, ladies and gentlemen. It's already there. It's not hiding from you. But the problem is, most of you won't take the time, which is why you're going to continue to owe people. Okay? That act explains exactly what you're supposed to do, and guess what? It hasn't been repealed. Sections of it has been repealed. The circulating notes in blank, that's been repealed. So they can no longer do circulating notes in blank why? Because now they just get to introduce circulating notes for the par value. Duh. And that's how they've been creating their wealth, people. With every single deposit of a promissory note, they get to create currency. So it's not your, well, technically it is your signature, but it's not your signature. It's your promissory note. It is not your promise to pay. Pay attention. It is your promissory note. Well, the promissory note is the promise to pay. Look, I'm going to mute you too. Uh -uh. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not your promise to pay. It is the promissory note because that's the provision of the act. Any notes, any bills of exchange, any banker's acceptance, any drafts, these items are currency. They are to be offset. Sorry. This one, do you guys hear me? Okay. He's just whining. He's just whining. All right, go there. Oftentimes, sorry, I was pausing because I was moving one. Oftentimes, they like to go play near her head. And she lays on top of them, and already three of them end up not breathing, and I end up having to bury. And so that's why I'm getting up all the time, because I can't stand death, and I don't want to be burying no more dogs. So I will keep an eye. Now, let's bring this to a close. We are at, we're going to go to about 35 minutes so that you guys can get a better understanding. Your money is banker's acceptance, trade acceptance, drafts, bills of exchange, and any notes under the Federal Reserve Act, not under the Securities Act. And you let them know, we're doing this under the Securities Act. Ladies and gentlemen, AmeriLegion is helping people document they're having discharged their debt. They're issuing a promissory note on your behalf. Why? Because the debt has to be offset. That's why they're doing the cancellation of debt. The debt has to be offset. Ladies and gentlemen, let me explain something to you. My corporation, the Eon Foundation, credit rating just changed as a result of the 1099s. The Eon Foundation doesn't do business like that. It's a nonprofit organization. But the credit rating 
just changed as a result of us completing the 1099s. I haven't dubbed into it. But I'm grateful that I was right. Discharging the debt creates credit. Discharging the debt creates credit. See, when you give a promissory note to the banks, they get to create currency because it's redeemable. And because it's redeemable, wait, pay attention. You didn't understand that your promissory notes are redeemable? Go back and look at the Federal Reserve Act Amendment. It tells you right there that it's redeemable, that they are to redeem it at par value, that they are to redeem it at 90% of its value. It's redeemable. But y'all think they got rid of gold. Well, better than the gold is your promissory note. Go back and look at what Congress said. Said that your promissory note was the gold, was the security, backing the instrument. That was Mr. Stiegel that said that. Your promissory notes are the gold. I'm not making that up. I'm not going to show it to you. I've been showing it to you for months, for years. You're not paying attention, but I just had a professor say it, and everybody will pay attention because he's a professor. I told you I've been doing this for too long, way too long. Your money is your promissory notes. But they won't do this. They won't. I don't care what they won't do. Follow the law. You follow the law, and then they won't follow the law, then follow the procedures for bringing a complaint against them. All right, now look, I, I would show you the document, but I'm not going to show you the document. I'm amending the complaint to the... Control of the currency. I'm amending that complaint. Why? Because I don't have to use their form. The September 24th, 1789 Judiciary Act, otherwise known as Article 3, has not changed. That statute at large has not changed. It still says that they cannot dismiss a complaint because it lacks format because it lacks form. So I amend all of their forms. And I'm so glad that people are paying attention to their right to do that. I don't care what they do. I don't care what they say because they ignore me and I take them to the Federal Court of Claims. I sue the United States. I don't sue them. They're agents of the United States. We have a contract. What's the contract? The contract is the New Deal. What's the New Deal? March 9, 1933, Presidential Proclamation 2039, Federal Reserve Act as amended, March 9, 1933, and the subsequent amendments to each of the aforementioned. That's the New Deal, people. People say, well, no, it also included the Securities Act. Y'all need to pay attention. It didn't include the Securities Act. That was Congress enacting Securities Act because they needed to make revenue. So they securitized everything. They made everything a security. That's why your notes, drafts, bankers acceptance, and bills of exchange are securities. They securitized everything. Everything became a security. It's just that those other items became securities under the securities and exchange. The two different acts, you had an exchange act and a securities act. Then you had the security exchange act. Then you had the trust indentured act. You had all the securities acts. But remember, March 9, 1933, the amendment to the Federal Reserve Act, those securities are defined in that paragraph. Did, did you not hear what I just said? The securities that I just mentioned, notes, drafts, bank acceptance, bills of exchange, and trade acceptances are defined in that one paragraph. With the exception of trade acceptances, trade acceptances is what Congress said later in the record that they were including which is basically, they're all bills of exchange. Okay, they're all bills of exchange. I'm not going to sit up here and tell you that it's basically a bill of exchange act. What I will tell you is that many of you don't understand law. You think you do. You open it and close your mouth, and it doesn't amount to anything. It doesn't amount to anything. All right, so my hope is, I said not more than 35 minutes, that you'll go back and you'll listen to this and understand what, is going on and how your money has already been listed by Congress. You just have to go and read it till you understand it. And if you don't really understand it, go back and listen to the videos where I'm explaining it. It'll make a lot more sense if you read it first and then listen to the video. Hey, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. I hope everything works well. This will be up tomorrow. Not